Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Conservancy Connections. My name is Kelly and I am the Coastal Educator from the Bald Head Island Conservancy. If you guys don't know, the Bald Head Island Conservancy is a small environmental nonprofit located on Bald Head Island, North Carolina. We are known for our sea turtle conservation, but we do so much more than just that. We do education projects, we do a lot of conservation efforts on Barrier Island, but we are stuck inside just like you guys, so we decided to bring the conservancy to you guys. If you guys do decide to donate to us, I wanna thank you from the very bottom of my heart. And if you do, please write education in the comment box so we know where the donation is coming from. I'm gonna be hanging out in the comment section down below, so if you guys have any questions whatsoever, I would love to answer them. So please, please, please ask away. And without further ado, let's get into this. So today we're gonna to be talking about flounders. Flounders are a type of fish that are found all over the east coast of the United States. But there are three different kinds that live in North Carolina's waters. Fish are crazy animals and they have so many adaptations and there are so many things about them that are all different and crazy. Let's just begin with what a fish even is. There are so many different types of fish out there that they need to have their own branch of science just like our birds from our last video. And this branch of science has a really fun name. It is called ichthyology. Can you guys say that with me? Ichthyology. It's a big word that means the study of all fishes. So what exactly makes a fish a fish? There are a couple different characteristics that make an animal a fish. And one of them is that they have a vertebrae. So they are vertebrates. So if you guys can reach up, feel the back of your neck, feel that vertebrae, that they have a backbone just like us. They have a pretty bony skeleton or they might even have a cartilage skeleton like our sharks. Our sharks are fish as well. Another thing that they all have in common is that they have gills. They do not breathe air like us, so I want you guys to take a deep breath and feel your lungs expand. They do not have lungs, so they need to be able to take oxygen into their body in a different way. They do this with their gills. They have a different area behind their eyes, and this is how they filter that water, and this is how they can breathe. They have a lot of blood vessels right next to the surface right there, and they absorb the oxygen straight through those blood vessels. But this is how they are able to breathe. Another thing that all fish have in common is that they have fins. So they need to be able to move in some way, right? They, don't, they can move in all different ways, and some of them just wiggle, some of them only use their fins, some of them only use their top and bottom fins, but they all have a type of fin. These are more related to our arms and our legs, and this is how they are able to get around. Not all fish have scales. Most fish have scales of some sort, but not all of them. And a lot of them even have a protective slime over those scales to help keep them very protected. Fish have all sorts of crazy senses, all, and they eat all different types of things. So they have so many adaptions to make them perfect for what they eat in the place that they live. So let's now jump into the fish that we are going to be talking about today. And that is flounders. We have three different species of flounders in North Carolina. We have summer flounders. We have southern flounders, and we have gulf flounders. We are lucky enough to have all three of those in North Carolina around Bald Head Island. Some of them are more common than others, and we will get into that in a little bit. But first, I just want to talk about flounders as a whole. Flounders are super cool, crazy animals, and they have really awesome adaptations. So these fish are called demersal. So this is a big word that means that they live on the bottom of the ocean. They live in very shallow waters and they live all the way on the bottom. They hunt on the bottom, they live there, and that is where they spend almost their entire lives. And these guys are so demersal that they have completely become flattened. So they are considered flatfish, which is, in, which is I think is so cool that they have their own term for being completely flattened. If you find a fish, that is flattened up and down like this, that usually means that they are going to live on the bottom of the ocean. But if they are flattened like this, that usually means that they will be living in the open water. They might be pelagic fish, they might live on a reef, 
but if they're flattened like this, usually that means that they live on the bottom. They are demersal. So this might be our stingrays. This might be other flounders or halibuts. There are some lizard fish even that have flattened bellies, and that's how you know they usually live on the bottom. But not all of those demersal fish are flatfish. Our flounders are really cool because they are not born the way that they are when they are adults. So they are born as uh, larvae, so they look pretty much like a normal fish. They are pretty flattened, but they have eyes on both sides of their heads. They do have a mouth that looks pretty normal. But as they get older, that all starts to change. They start to move a little bit more to that flatfish lifestyle. They start to go this way. Their coloration on the bottom starts to turn more white. The coloration on the top starts to turn more brown. They have that counter shading like our sharks do. And then their eyes start to migrate from the bottom of their head to the top. So they have both eyes on one side of their heads. Their mouths start to be more pronounced on the top of their bodies. And depending on the type of flounder it is, depends on which side of their body they lay on. Most of them lay on their left side of their body, but not all of them. So this is called metamorphosis. So there's a couple other animals who do, who go through metamorphosis as they age. And our flounders are definitely one of those animals. Flounders usually are a marine species, which means that they live in salt water, but they can survive varying levels of salt. So they can even go up into our marshes, into that brackish water, and they can still survive. I know that I personally personally have caught flounders in the marsh, which is pretty cool. They just like to live in shallower waters. They are predators and they are pretty high up on the food chain. When they are really absolutely tiny little baby flounders, they like to eat some small invertebrates and tiny, tiny little fish. But as they get older and as they get bigger, which they can get relatively large, they can get to be about 15, 16 inches, maybe even bigger, they will start to eat larger fish and maybe even some crabs. So they're really crazy creatures and they are pretty lazy in the way that they hunt. They just lay on the bottom. They will even shiver themselves into the mud or the sand so that it covers their body. And they just wait. They just wait for some food to come by. And then whenever food does come by, they jump up and they chomp that animal. So they are called ambush predators, and this means that they just sit and wait for their food to come by. If they're ambush predators, they need to be really good at camouflage. They need to really blend into their surroundings. Some types of flounders, actually most types of flounders, can change colors. They can lighten and darken depending on where they are living and where they're hanging out. They are also covered in spots. Different species have different types of spots, and this also helps break them up from the bottom so you don't just see the outline of a fish. Those spots make them blend into the spots that are on the bottom of the ocean. All right, so like I said, we have three different types of flounders in North Carolina. We have the southern flounder, we have the summer flounder, and we have the gulf flounder. And because they look so similar, we have the same fishing rules for all three of them. So if you are 16 years and older, you do need a fishing license to fish in North Carolina, whether that is the marine or freshwater fishing. You do have to pay for these licenses, but this money goes directly back into the conservation of the areas that these fish are living in. So unfortunately, our southern flounder is a little bit overfished, so their populations are kind of low. Everyone loves to eat flounders. They are a really yummy type of fish, but right now in North Carolina, their populations are low. So for the recreation season for our flounders is relatively short and you have to catch a flounder that is pretty big so that our populations of flounders are going to continue to grow. So for 2020, the recreational fishing season for flounders is from, is from August 16th to September 30th. So that's later in the season after they are done spawning so they are no longer reproducing. They have to be at least 15 inches long and you can only catch four in a single day. One reason why we ask fishermen to catch fish that are a certain size is so that they had plenty of time to reproduce before they are caught. This is so that the population stay very healthy and there are as many flounders as we can get out 
in the environment so we can continue eating them and harvesting them and they can continue to have a healthy population. You can find different fishing practices online. So every state has different fishing laws. I do recommend looking up where you are going to be going fishing before you're going. If you're looking for a specific fish that you want to catch or even crabs that you want to catch, there are certain limitations. So we love our flounders. They are super cool animals. They are absolutely crazy looking, but they are very important to our environment because they are those apex predators. They help control those populations below them. And that is all that I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed learning about our flounders. They are super cool animals and we are lucky to have them in North Carolina. So thank you guys again for coming out. If you guys do want to leave a donation for us, we have a link down below. If you do, please write education in the comment section so we know where your donation is coming from. I wanna thank you guys so much for everything that you do for the Conservancy and coming out to these videos twice a week. And I hope to see you guys again next time. Bye.